Now we should know about the damping. What is basically a damping? Damping is basically building set to oscillation by earthquake shaking. Eventually comes to rest with time. Why building comes to rest after uh, after you know, like earthquake? Cause the forces got damped. On the right you can see that the example of a simple spring. Apply the vertical force on this block. It's initially the deformation increases but eventually it comes to rest. Why? Because of damping. So what happens basically is that oscillatory energy converts to other form of energy. In the case, when earthquake strikes in the building, that energy you know like by earthquake is converted into form of heat and sound. So it is a phenomenon that makes any vibrating body structure to decay in amplitude of motion gradually by means of energy dissipation through various mechanisms. So that mechanism of conversion from one energy to another is called damping. So damping is expressed as a fraction of the critical damping. That is, minimum value of damping at which the building gradually comes to rest from any one side of its neutral position without undergoing any oscillation. For example, in Indian courts, what they basically do is that they allow 5% damping for enforced concrete structures and 2% damping for steel structures. So here you can see that on the this gray area denotes 0.5% damping. So here you can see that the displacement is very high. For 5% damping, it is the orange line. Displacement is somewhat less. And 20% damping, the displacement is somewhat more less. So the more the damping, the displacement will be lesser. Now we should understand what are the types of structural damping. What are types of damping? The number one is structural damping. Normal ambient shrinking of the building. Many factor impairs its motion. That is, the drag from air resistance around the building micro cracking of concrete in the structural members and the friction between various interfaces in the building like masonry infill walls, RCC beams, columns. So that damping is called structural damping. Here you can see that the first graph is like this. That is there is no damping. After that we see that the frequency uh, amplitude of the motion almost decreases to zero. So the motion got damped. Second is hysteretic damping. So under earthquake shaking, strong earthquake shaking, buildings are damaged. So reinforcement bars and concrete of the reinforced concrete building, for example, enter the non-linear range of the material behavior. The steel as well as concrete are no more elastic. They go beyond elastic range. That is, the material behavior becomes non-linear. So damping that arise from inelastic actions of the concrete material and steel material is called hysteretic damping. So this also further dampens the oscillation of the building. Third is called radiation damping. So this damping occurs when soil strata underneath the building is flexible and absorb energy input to the building during earthquake shaking and sends it to far off distance in the soil medium. So this is called radiation damping. So basically in nutshell what is basically earth it comes below the surface of the earth due to rupture of the bedrock. So what happens is that energy is released from bedrock and it transfers from the bedrock to the buildings and the whole damage occurs. So the release of the stored strain energy that spreads out in all the directions from the faulty region or the from the fault area in the form of scissoring mirrors that travel through the body and along the surface of the earth. There are two types of waves for the earthquakes. One number one is the body wave. Second is the surface wave that together cause shaking of the ground surface of the earth on which the buildings are founded. So the characteristics of the ground shaking control earthquake resistance of the building in addition to the building characteristics. Ground motion can be measured in the form of acceleration, velocity or displacement. So accelerograph is in like an equipment that captures the ground shaking even in the near field of the earthquake fold, faults where the shaking is violent. Huh. So here you can see that this is the bedrock that ruptures. The earthquake force travels in all directions. Here you can see that the earthquake force come here and the, it strikes on the building. So the record obtained from an accelerograph, that is the variation of ground acceleration with time, is recorded at a point on a ground during earthquake is called accelerogram. Three accelerograms are recorded simultaneously along three mutual perpendicular directions to capture the complete oscillation of ground at a location called a station. So for every earthquake, if we are recording the data, 
the data will always be made along the three axes that is x axis y axis and z axis and these three forces these three axes are obviously perpendicular to each other after that what is peak ground acceleration accelerogram carry distinct information regarding ground shaking namely peak amplitude duration of strong shaking and frequency content so peak amplitude representing the peak ground acceleration is an important design parameter for example if you say that the pga value 0.6 g so the ground accelerates at 0.6 times the acceleration due to gravity g so peak ground acceleration of 0.6 g determines that the horizontal earthquake force will be 60% of its weight here you can see that these are the notable earthquakes i should say the maximum pga values recorded are up to 2.9 ng 4.36 g and 1.47 g so this is basically vector sum of h1 h2 and v that is x y and z so along three times acceleration due to gravity for so for example if the building weight is approximately 100 ton 300 ton of horizontal earthquake force was applied on the building so we can you know like imagine how much amount of earthquake force has been applied or how much damage must had occurred in the case of this earthquake